Awesome. Uh, we're back season three, episode four at this point um, with Elsie out of the West Coast. So thanks for joining us. Uh, you're battling through a migraine. So I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah. And you, you mentioned before the show, you're on the West Coast. What part of the West Coast are you on? So I'm in Sacramento, California. Okay. Northern. The part where you can surf and snowboard in the same day. Yes. Is what I've heard. Hour and a half each direction. Yeah. That's awesome. We can't do either where we're at. We're uh, <laughs> the middle of Wisconsin. Well, southeastern Wisconsin. And uh, you you can't even probably go outside too much right now. <laughs> uh, right now we're 22 degrees. So we can go outside. Earlier in the week, we were like negatives. We got we got a foot of snow out here. We probably got four inches of rain yesterday, the day yeah. before yesterday. Yeah, yep. that, was crazy. that washed like all the snow off. So we don't have anything. So now it's just I, cold. I have a friend in Wisconsin and he's always sending me the negative 22. And I'm like, no, like under 45 is like, it's really hard to cope with. So for yep. us, I, today it's probably gonna be a high of 66, a low of 45. So um, I can't handle snow. <laughs> Lucky. Look, I got a couple friends live in the LA San Diego area and they're always like, yeah, it's 65. I'm going to go play basketball outside today. Mm -hmm. Like it's negative. San Diego, the weather's always perfect. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so from what I can, uh, from what I've read and what I've heard, you're a property manager. Um, I am a, uh, not a property manager per se. I mean, I manage my own properties, but okay. I okay. Have an investment. I do right. own investment properties. Awesome. So I have purchased several, um, primarily I do boarding houses. So okay. that's kind of what I have. Um, 2020 was a hard year, especially, you know, for all of us, uh, landlords, but especially, you know, like in, with, um, all of the eviction of moratoriums. Um, so in yeah. 2020, I did a shift. I sold all of my small single family homes and then bought large houses to, to, to run boarding houses. That's, I'm sure the whole COVID thing has changed your business quite a bit. And hopefully we can get into that um, as the show goes on. But uh, if we can start from square one and kind of give the audience, uh, where did you come from? So how did you get into real estate? What were you doing before? Just kind of a 30 second quick little intro to how you, you became the person you are right now with investments. Okay. So I grew up super duper poor. Um, when I was 21 and on my first job, I used to work all the overtime I can. And I started investing in stocks, like $25 a week, $50 a week, whatever I could afford. And so I took that and was able to buy my first house. And then at couple, some, at some point in time later, I decided I wanted to buy another house because I didn't like where we lived. And when I did that, I just didn't sell the first house. Um, and so that kind of just started it. So I was using my um, equity in one house to buy another house. So originally just for my primaries, but then I just continued kind of you doing that to acquire more houses. Awesome. And they were all in the, the same, like Sam or not San Francisco, uh, Sacramento. Sacramento area. Yeah. Okay. So all kind of local, which is awesome. And you were, you were pretty much going single family homes at that point. Absolutely. It was just, um, okay. and then in like 2018, I was working two jobs and I had a lot of extra money. I'm not a spender. Um, and so me and my husband makes pretty decent money as well. And so I was working two jobs, had a lot of extra money, had a friend who needed a place to stay. She had pit bulls. And so I bought a house for her to rent. And then that kind of added to the snowball, um, and then when she decided she was going to buy her own house, that's when I had to really consider what do I want to do and how do I want to do it? And so that actually is what triggered for me to sell my single family homes. And well, I, I still own single family homes, but now I own huge single family homes. Okay. Yeah. And you were calling them boarding houses. So can you get into that? Because I'm sure the listeners here have never heard the term boarding house. So if you could describe yeah, so what that is. Yeah. So I rent by the room, which I mean, for a landlord, it's kind of amazing because I can go into that house anytime I want. I can't go into their bedrooms anytime I want. I have to give the traditional you know, notice, but I can go into those houses anytime I want, which is nice. Um, 
So for example, when I sold one, her house, I ended up buying and, um, and hers was just a two bedroom, one bath, small house. I ended up buying, taking the equity out of that and buying an eight bedroom, five and a half bathroom house. Um, and so it was a little bit further away because in Sacramento, that would be a million plus. So um, it's about uh, an hour away. Um, but I bought that. And so now I rent each room individually. So as long as about half the people are paying their rent, the mortgage is paid. So yeah. I didn't have the same anxiety about like, okay, she moves out and somebody moves in and they don't pay the rent. And then I have to come up with the full thing. So it's one thing in California that that 1% rule really doesn't exist, right? Yeah. We're living off of hopefully we break even because our equity is king, right? Like our equity grows so fast. That that's really what we're going for. So usually like if I lose two, $300 in a month, um, that's fine because that equity, you know, she lived in that house for three years and it was about $130,000 in equity in three years. Wow. So it was worth it, you know, to yeah. lose two, $300 a month for $130,000 in two years. Um, so, but now I have it. So yeah, as long as half of the rooms are rented, basically I'm making my money back. Yeah. Um, and then, so I did, I bought, I started that process, found this house so great. And, um, and then I found another house that I just absolutely had to have. And that's kind of like shifted my whole worldview and everything about my life, but that's how it started. (laughs) And when I was, when I was reading and and listening and just trying to wrap my head around getting into real estate investing, the one thing they said was you can start small with single family homes, but the one thing you need to understand is when there's a vacancy, you're 100% vacant. There's no safety net. And if you're going to think about going either single family or you're kind of like in between like a fourplex and a single family, because it is a single family, but it operates like a fourplex. Um, If you have some vacancy or someone doesn't pay rent, you're only 75% vacant or 50% vacant, but at least you have income coming in, which is like that extra safety net uh, that you have, which is very, very cool. Between that and my ability to actually like go into the houses whenever I want to um, and just make sure everything's clean. I actually clean my properties myself. Oh, nice. so that way I know, hey, this bathtub's not leak uh, is not draining correctly. So I actually go in and clean my own properties. I do most of my own handyman work. So I go in there and I change my own air filters and I and you know change locks and do all the stuff that I have to do when I have to do it. So the tenants know me well. Um, yeah. So I have pretty good relationship with most of my tenants. Although honestly, these tenants, um, when I started this, because they are fully furnished, um, which I love because I love decorating, um, they're fully furnished uh, properties, which makes it easier because I don't have people bringing their stuff in and out doing damage to my house. Yep. Um, they just have to show up basically with their clothes and their food and they're good. So I assumed when I got into this, it would be mostly young people. Yeah. So I've been shocked. It is not. Really, you know, people live with their parents until they can afford a five-bedroom house in California. That's just the way it is. I don't. It's not how I grew up, but that's you know, like we yeah. can wait to get out at eighteen years old. That is not how it is today. So most of my tenants are are much older. Like my young tenant is like forty-nine. <laughs> really? Yeah. So, and up until their mid sixties. So those are that's kind of the age range I have, you know, which it works well for people on a fixed income because I'm paying the utilities, um, their internet and everything. So they literally, you know, all they have to do is be able to, to pay that. And so it makes it a little bit easier, I think, for them to budget. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So it, it's kind of a, it's a win-win situation, I feel like, because I get to give them, uh, you know, safe and affordable, but also a really nice home yeah. um, for them, which is, you know, makes me feel good. Yeah. in in those same people that are in these, the boarding houses would be the same people that, and I'm, I'm also an agent. So I'm trying to equate it. If they're going to go out and buy, they're probably the people that are in the market for like a condo where they don't want to do any maintenance. They don't want to do anything. They just want their spot to live and they're these happy. People will never buy a house. Like, right. Never. Right. They're just not that. I mean, if they were, they would have done it by now. Right. I'm just saying for the the feel of not having to do yard, like they like the feel of the house, but they don't want to do the maintenance or the yard care or anything like that. They don't want to clean gutters. They just want their space to live, which is what you offer. But it was such a foreign concept, I feel like even 10 years ago to set up something like that. 
boarding houses have been around since forever. I don't think they were popular. I mean, I mean they not were the Midwest. Really, really popular I'll just say the, the Midwest. The 1900s, like the early and then 1950s even, they were super, super popular. But I would say for, since probably like the 1960s, 1970s, they have become very much less popular. Yeah, we got to find... We should find how many there are in, in the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area. Cause I haven't come across many investors that do it, which I, I like the idea. Um, I just I mean, don't know. It takes People a lot here of trust. Go like Airbnb and just leave it at that. I, I would think around here, I would think it would take a lot more trust because it depending, I mean, I know you have your own space, like your own room, but the common areas, I don't, I, I guess there's a lot more to be angry about because of not having as nice of weather when you can step outside or go <laughs> do things. So maybe everybody's contained. And I don't want to like, uh, I, I had a question about like the demographic, like you said, you said mid to late forties on up, right? I mean, are these, are you talking like divorced um, people with or without kids and, you know, like things like that. So it, it they, probably all walks of life in that age range, but you would think like, you know, middle-aged guy going through a divorce, needs a place to stay, doesn't have the income or doesn't have the money to put down on a, an apartment or a, like a, a full home, you know, this is probably a great chance for him to have his own space and not have to worry about, like you said, moving furniture in and out and doing all that stuff. He's like, all right, here we go. And what kind of terms do you give him? Is it three, six months, a year? So I don't usually start off anybody with longer than a six month. It depends on the time of year too. So like right. if you move in during the winter, you're going to get a six month. Yeah. Maybe I might do later just because I want to see if you're going to be a good fit. Right. And yeah. if not, I'm, I want to get you out. Um, so some of the tenants actually have been there long before I bought the house. They've been there for like five years because the previous owner, they had rented out the, some rooms upstairs and then the downstairs they had rented as a single family home. And I switched it and turned it all into to, to room rentals. Um, so they have been there for quite some time. But yeah, so I usually start with six months because I want to make sure you're a good fit before or, you know, but I also have had a fair amount of travel nurses or right. okay. live in a wine good, area. Good. So like people coming in just for wine season and stuff like that too. So, okay. so it, we kind of get a mixed bag, but right now it's been, since there's less travel nurses, I have a lot of caretakers in the house, but yeah, you're right. Two of these women are from Africa. They don't have kids or family here. I've got, you know, an, I said a senior woman who she's got, she's got family around, but she's not married. She, there's no kids. Um, so, and again, I, you know, I, I kind of prefer that older demographic, but they spend most of their time in their rooms. Now, the reason I clean these houses is so that way there's no fighting over common areas. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because that is one of the biggest issues with roommates always is like, oh my God, they're such a slob. Like for me, kitchens and bathrooms have to be spotless. So if I live with people who left it trashed all the time, there would be animosity. So yeah. I just cut that out by going in and cleaning their kitchens and their bathrooms. Yeah. Good deal. How often do you do the, the cleaning on that? I would like to do it every uh, two weeks, but usually it's about once a month. Okay. okay. No, that's super cool. And you had mentioned um, previously, it was about the demographics and the people in there. It's escaping me now, but... Um, it was a it was a very very good point. We're gonna have to replay it and go back. Um, man, oh man, that's escaping me. Um, but I did I I like the concept. I want to be able to bring that here in Wisconsin. I think it'd be a super fascinating um, rental avenue to go into. I would just have to find a property to do it. Is there anything that you look for when you're looking for these properties, like specifically? Bedrooms and like, bathrooms. Is there a bedroom count? Uh, bedrooms and bathrooms. Oh. That's all I care about. Okay. 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 And do you go, do you try to go like two units to a bathroom? Is there any sort of system that you look for like that in order that you've seen either works or does not work? Yeah, I definitely try to. So I have five people using two bathrooms upstairs. That would be about my max. And there's also a half bath that can be used um, downstairs. Um, but honestly, I'm actually like, because of the rental room, like one of my tenants lives in Florida. He works sometimes out here. So he rents the house year round so he can leave his car 
um, in the secured parking lot and leave his stuff here. But he was here one month so far, uh, like of the whole last year. That's an um, ideal tenant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so not using my bathroom, you right. know, like, yeah. so I have uh, these tenants, one works six days a week, you know, so it's really you would think that there'd be a lot of wear and tear with eight rooms. All these people. It's really not, you know, because again, they do stay in their rooms, but most of them work a lot. That's, that's a awesome. good concept. It's good. Th I mean, yeah, that's a great, great concept. Great idea. I mean, it, I remember what it recalled. I remember I had a roommate. It was about you talking about the common spaces in people being messy and not cleaning. Obviously we were college kids. So all of us were messy and I will take blame on it. Dishes were like the last thing on our list of things to do. And we had one roommate who just would never do it. And I walked in one day after practice and he's eating cereal off of a plate because he didn't <laughs> want to wash a bowl. And it's like, dude, come load the dishwasher one time. So those are the situations that thank you for going in and resetting the apartment for or the, the space for him. But I also have very strict rules about cleanliness, yep. about just all the basic considerations, right? I've never had to usually use them, but I do have them there in case I need to let, violate somebody on a lease because of the fact that like, okay, no, you can't leave your stuff all over the common space. You leave your yeah. stuff in the room, you need to clean up after yourself, you need to, you know, so it's a whole lot of just basic, like common uh, knowledge just to be polite to one another. You know, I have this list of house rules, um, but again, it's not usually an issue, especially when you have older tenants, you know, yeah. it's, it's not, again, it's, it wasn't the demographic I was expecting, but it, it, it works for sure. <laughs> Is yeah. there a monthly card club for all the tenants? Like everybody gets together and plays bridge or, or euchre or, <laughs> or canasta. Right. No. Yeah. Bridge. No. Yeah. Right. They actually something. are very like to themselves in their rooms. Most okay. Of the time, honestly. That's ideal. That's honestly ideal that I'm trying to think of like properties in my area that would, that would fit that. I mean, you guys have them. You guys have these huge old Victorians. I yeah. mean, a lot yeah. of them have been turned into quadplexes, but you yeah. have big houses. And so that's the thing. When you, you know, for me, mostly I'm buying old houses from the 1800s. And if, are you willing to share like your requirements for like moving in? Is there a, a security deposit or first month rent last month? And like on average, what you look to charge for a room? I, and I know you said you include all utilities on your end. You pay everything for that. Mm -hmm. So like, what does that look like for you? And so uh, for rent, uh, for a deposit, it's two months de uh, deposit, which, okay. um, you know, we can't do first, last and deposit. So it's just, no, it's your first plus two months deposit is what it is. Um, and, you know, I could actually charge three times in the state of California because it's furnished, but I do two to make it more reasonable. And sometimes I will allow people to make payments towards that second month deposit if they don't have it, depending on the situation. Right. I am yeah. a sucker. I'm an empath. Yeah. Um, and so I do, can, 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 I am concerned about my tenants, like well being and stuff. So I know that everybody's like, keep it business. I can't. It's just right. who I am. But usually that works out in my favor. Um, so yeah. Uh, so that's my big requirement. And of course I, you know, I look at credit scores, but again, I don't really care about your credit scores. I care what's on your credit. Cause if you have, yep. I don't care if you have student debt, I don't care if you have medical bills, but if you have utilities or evictions, um, yep. those are the things that I actually care about. But right. if it was like in 2017, you know, I have, I have one of my tenants, like his son died in 2017 and clearly he stopped, you know, caring and didn't pay any of his bills at that time. I get that. Like that yeah. makes sense to me. Like mm -hmm. I yeah. would be gutted too. So I let him and he's the most amazing tenant. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I kind of look at people as people. Um, and so I don't really have like this, oh, strict, you know, this. Um, and I do have a lot of tenants just because again, when you're renting by the room, you have a lot of tenants, right? It's not yeah. like one tenant, one family. It's right. not like that. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably more in their business than I, I probably should be, but again, it's, you know, it's, it's just a little bit different situation. I feel like than just like renting an apartment to a family. Yeah. So. That's a good dynamic. I mean, there's, there's property managers all the time that are like completely hands off and they don't even know or interact with the tenants. And sometimes that works for the tenants and the, the owner of the property. You know, I have, I have a friend who 
I think she's got 20 doors. If you, if you call it that house, single family plus rentals, and she just uses a property management company. And I think sometimes she might have final say with who the tenants are. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, she just lets them handle it. And she's like, okay, yeah, good to go rent it out to them. And then she never sees them or interacts with them. And yeah, I'm a control freak and yeah, I've worked very hard to get every single one of my properties. I am not leaving those decisions up to somebody else. Right. And, and that, and that's, yeah, I, I can agree with that too. Like it's the more, you know, and just like you said, it's, you are coming across people who have stories or have situations that happen. And I, I think I am the same way. I'm, I'm, Kindness always wins for me, man. I mean, like I, I can be the bad guy sometimes, but I always try to do the right thing. And I tell that to my kids, do the right thing, even when nobody's watching. So it's like, Mm -hmm. if you can help make this person's situation or life a little bit better in that, in that instance, and you know, it may not mean a lot to you, or it's easy for you to say yes, but it could be mean so much more to them because of the, the assistance that you're providing. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, Yeah. I'm an empath, but, and so I'm a highly intuitive empath so I can read people extremely well okay. um and I kind of can I know more than I should about people just in general um but I'm also neuro atypical so I can definitely be like I feel your energy I feel bad for you but don't make me mad because when you make me mad it's a different situation now I'm always going to be professional but I'm going to tell you the way it is always I'm always yeah. going to say it the way that it is and and so um, I don't let people take advantage of me and I'm going to be there to be like, Susan, what are you doing? Clean, clean. You need to clean your stuff up. You need to take this out of the house. I'm not doing this anymore. Like, yeah. so I, you know, I can be like, you know, sometimes they text me like I'm their, their parent or like, you know, like they want me to work out squabbles over like, he's coming in here and being unreasonable because I'm using the hot plate when he wants it. And I'm like, I'm going to yep. order another hot plate. I don't want to hear this conversation again. Yeah. Have a nice day. <laughs> yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. But. And I, I do like that you do your own property management. I do my own for most of the same reasons. I mean, what I, and I think our culture is feeling it where things get too big and the personal aspect gets completely taken out and it's just numbers, but that's super hard in real estate because you're dealing with people's lives. Like they need a roof and it can't just be looking at numbers. I'm, I'm the same way with credit score. Like when we do our background checks, I tell them like everything's going to come through. The best thing we can do right now is talk about it before it comes up on a sheet. Because if I pull the report and you don't tell me about this thing that happened, then what do I, I look at it as like you trying to hold that from me. Like I don't find out. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to work on honesty here, like I would rather have you tell me before. And if you tell me and it pops up and that's what it is, that's what it is. Like I, I'm not going to hold it back because you have a low credit score because you went through uh, a separation and for a, uh, for a year you weren't able to do or pay some bills. Mm-hmm. Like that is life. Things happen. Mm-hmm. But if you're back and you're working and things are going and you're paying all your bills and you're all caught up or catching up, then yeah, I don't see why there's an issue there. Um, but once you start giving it out to somebody else, like a property manager, their turn or their head turns into like, I just have to make the numbers work for my client. And at some point or themselves exactly, as they're yeah, yeah, yeah. hiring their friends and their family at all these yep. like, like ridiculous costs to come in and do the maintenance. Like I can do that. So yep. I don't need you to do that. You know, like, yeah. so that's, uh, that's my thing. It's just, it's giving up money again. I grew up very poor, so I didn't grow up with servants to do the stuff for me. Right. So like yeah. life. So I'm still going to go do it all myself. Um, yeah, I I mean I have control issues. That's just who I am. So, but <laughs> it but happens. Yeah, I but I I do have that conversation with with my tenants about like I I'm the property manager. My job here is to make sure that your space is operating and safe. I'm not the police. I'm not going to fix quarrels. Like those, you're an adult. You have to treat yourself as an adult. If obviously there's something legal that needs to get involved, yes, I'm here to support you, but. Like treat this as your own space. Like I want you to have some ownership feel to this. And, and I do give them freedom. Like if you, if you want to paint a wall, paint it. I will tell you, if you go lime green on me, <laughs> you're getting charged. You're getting uh, charged for me to put it back. But I, work, I mean, you can see all of my extra decor that's just sitting around waiting oh yeah. for another house all around me here. Yep. Do not touch my walls. Do not. <laughs> you're welcome to change the bedding. 
if you don't like my uh, my comforters, do not touch my walls. <laughs> put a bunch of nails and I holes and painting. screws I in the wall. Painting. Yeah. No, <laughs> but I, I just there's tired, artwork like, already all over the walls. There's no reason for you to put any more in there. So it's actually worked surprisingly to my favor because no one's taken me up on it. Because I tell them like, hey, if you want to mount your TV, mount your TV. If something goes wrong and you hit an electrical cord. Like you are liable for all of it. It's all in the lease. Like I obviously don't want you touching the walls. I don't want you painting. I don't want you doing anything. Like you can't take baseboard off and put your own baseboard on. Like we're going to cut the line there. But if you want to put up a picture, put it up. Mm -hmm. But if it's damaged, when I come back in, all of that is falling on you. Mm -hmm. So like, there's your ownership side to it. So treat it how you want. Yeah, um, and that no kind of single ever... family homes, I wouldn't have mattered. I minded. Yeah, but now I'm doing furnished rentals, and yep. so they're I, way different. There's no reason for them to hang a TV because I've already done it. Yep. Yeah, I'm yep. an expert TV hanger at this point in time. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, there is no reason for people to do it because I, yeah, I have already done it, so yeah. it's not a problem. In, but... I was going to ask you when you do your your common spaces. There's obviously verbiage in your leases with that. Did you get that like trial and error where like something happened? You're like, okay, I need to put a clause in there. Or did you talk to an attorney? Did you take it from like condo docs? Like how did you formulate your lease agreement to fit your business? Um, so I kind of went from kind of some of the, I read some books and kind of took those basics and then just, yeah, adjusted it to my needs and then have yeah. made changes as I have found other things that happen or ever, other things have gone along I've continued to make some changes to it but yeah. for the most part again being who I am I usually have I, I usually have a really good job uh picking people now there are some people who are like if you're a narcissist um I sometimes I can't I can't read you uh, because you're a really good liar um and so I've only been fooled a couple of times but yeah. you know I have kind of gone through now I've been a, I have been a landlord for like 11 years but again like I had tenants who were staying long term in single family homes which is totally different than this so where I'm much more involved in the properties um and then so you know and I've only ever wanted to do be a long-term tenant or owner um and now I have an Airbnb which I never expected nice but that was again the same situation. I, you know, I, I, I go to realtor. I look for houses with more than five bedrooms. I found a seven bedroom, two bath house about an hour away, the opposite direction. Um, and I just had to have it. And so I, I mean, I can't tell you why I just absolutely had to have that house. And it took about two weeks for the real estate agent to get back to my agent. Um, and we went and looked at it and I walked in and I'm like, I have to have this house. <clears throat> I had it all planned out in my head because again, seven bedrooms, two baths, uh, not enough bathrooms, but I can add bathrooms. Um, it, the house is like 3,200 square feet, uh, uh, finished. And then there's like an 800 square foot unfinished basement. Um, and so I was like, I can figure out another place to put a bathroom. And I was like picturing it. I'm like, I could put up, close off these doors. I can make a two bedroom apartment there. And I was going to turn that into an Airbnb. So I could go visit because it's like, um, it's in Jackson, California. It's on this main street, okay. which is like main street, USA. It's, you know, it's an, it's a wild West town, but it's just like super cute street, like historic, nothing but historic buildings. Um, cool. and so like all the amazing restaurants and candy stores and all these kind of things that, you know, it just kind of brings, bring me a lot of joy. Um, and so I bought the house and it ended up being haunted. Like, oh very haunted interesting and so I went from I bought it to be a long-term rental I you know I did move so I had tenants that moved in and I told everybody it was haunted before um they moved in but they because I realized it when I did the final walkthrough that it was haunted and then I had a paranormal investigation before anybody had a paranormal group come in um before anybody even um, you know, moved in or anything like that. So I told, I, I warned people and the area is extremely, is one of those areas that's just very traumatized, like Gettysburg or whatever, where everybody's houses are haunted. So it's like not that big of a deal. Right. So, which I didn't know that because I live an hour away and, um, and so, yeah, but they ended up not lasting, but two, 
three months. And so at that point in time, I decided to switch it over. I, I apologize. My uh, dogs, I didn't lock them up. And so okay. there's a bunch of bulldogs right. running around with all their heavy breathing. So <laughs> um, I have a boxer who's been annoying me underneath my desk, like nudging my leg for the past five minutes. They just realized that I'm over here. And so, yeah, so it's kind of ridiculous at this point. The, uh, the haunted, and I, I was going to ask you a question about the California rules through COVID, but I wanted to touch on, you threw haunted on and I cannot bypass it. So we've had a couple of spiritual uh, people on this podcast. Uh, I think two in season one and then one in season two um, talking about crystals and energy fields and in blocks and all that stuff. That stuff is so fascinating. And I don't know I, anything I, about any of this. I'm just saying I'd never been to a paranormal investigation yeah, I, mean, I used to see ghosts when I was a kid, honestly, um, but I stopped when I was in high school. Um, and so I know I have certain abilities uh, that have nothing to do with any of this that unfortunately won't make me rich. But like, I know my friends are pregnant before they do. I know the genders of their baby. Sometimes I know the initials. Sometimes I know what they look like. Um, I literally just had this happen this week where like two months ago, I had a dream. My friend had a baby she's getting divorced. Well, she just told me she's having a baby. She met a guy and she's having a baby. And I'm like, I know. Ooh. Like, and so this is just like, this has been like kind of a normal thing for me. But again, I walked through there and the house was just Disneyland. So the energy was so amazing. I was just loving it. And then I found out it used to be a brothel and it was a boarding house. So as you said, there's like not very Ooh. many boarding houses. This house was a boarding house from like 19, like 1896 um, until pretty recently the family who the one family who owned it the longest they owned it until uh 1996 and so for a majority of the from the time of 1920 whatever to 1996 they were basically running it as a uh my color on my screen just changed that's really weird um it's the ghosts i know it's They're the sun it's the sunlight chill out. i know, I know. <laughs> like, how do I see that's that? where i go with ghosts like i always think and I'm I'm coming around to it slowly where I'm seeing it, but I always thought like, okay, there's a rational answer, like the door shut. And I'm like, okay, well, if there's a window open, it might've pulled the draft and it closed it. Like there's always an, a logical answer, but so, some things I, I, have, I have to say, like with the world being one energy source, there's energy in play that we don't see and don't feel. Mm -hmm. And that's where I leave it. I don't know if it's ghosts or just like a, a energy force that we don't know about something's there i don't know what it is so my real job is i work in science i work in research right but the conservation of of energy states the law of conservation of energy says we cannot get rid of or create energy yep. right? period point blank it's right there in science right so but yeah so people have always said like um like when i was uh, long story short i was walking through doing the 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 final walk through with my real estate agent and my uh handyman at the time and I just looked at them and said, there's a girl in that closet. And they just kind of looked at me like I was crazy. I'm sure but they love that. I, yeah, they're just like, okay. Well, then I, I had a paranormal, which now knowing what I know, I should have known when I did the inspection because the home inspector did not want to inspect the house whatsoever. I, I was like, no, I need you to inspect. He's like, but it's just so big. And there's so many windows. He had just inspected that eight bedroom, five and a half bathroom house for me like three weeks before. So I'm like, no, 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 no. I need you to go do it. And when I get there, the first thing he says to me is, what if there's ghosts? And I was like, I don't care. And so I haven't talked to him to ask him like, did you know something that, you know, like, you know, yeah. but that was the first question. And my real estate agent actually at the time also had a weird experience that day because she was hearing knocking behind her. She was in the back of the house, the solarium, and she heard knocking behind her. So she assumed that he was like, it's a creek behind the house. Like literally the foundation is the retaining wall for the creek. Um, so she figured, but it was dry, pretty dry. So she thought he was down there doing something. Well, then she saw him walking on the front porch. Hmm. And so that was like their first experiences. But again, I just thought, oh, nothing big, no big deal. Okay, the house is haunted, who cares? Yeah. But this house is like very haunted. There's like 12 of them probably. Um, and so, but yeah, in the beginning I was, you know, in groups and they're like, oh, you need to have your carbon monoxide tested because carbon monoxide can make people feel like things are haunted. I was like, all right, cool. But like, I had like a baby footprint appear on the stairs, like a wet baby footprint. We I, don't had have, that. I don't have babies. I don't, I don't particularly like kids, 
Um, I shouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> we'll edit that out. Yeah. I, whatever. Nope, what leaving it, it in. I like dogs, it. kids, I not so much. So I don't have them hanging out with me in the house. So I don't have babies to have baby footprints on the stairs and baby footprints appear on the stairs. So, um, you know, I, it, stuff like that, like uh, bouncing the ball at night. As yeah. People tell me so do you, and do you, actually my mind changed. We were doing a basement for a customer and I was doing the shower and I was setting, I was setting the the shower pan and I'd left it and I told him like, Hey, the shower pan is drying. So just stay out of the bathroom. And they're like, okay, got it. Had a nice day. Came back on Monday and there was a footprint, like half of the foot. And it was like size five. And I'm like, there's, we don't have anybody in our crew that has that small of a foot. And we, we took the guy who had the smallest foot, put it next to it. And his foot was double the size. Like it was a kid's foot with the toes that were like that went around the corner, stepped in the shower pan. And I brought the, the customer down. I was like, hey, I'm trying to not make this weird, but were you guys in the basement? And he's like, why? And I was like, because I mean, you can look at this. I don't know what it is. And he's like, that's a footprint. And I was like, yeah. So we weren't here over the weekend. And he's like, neither were I. I'm going to be upstairs. Just let me know when you're done. And just vacated. Didn't want anything to do with it. And it's stuff like that where I'm like, I can't say no. And if I can't say declared no, there's got to be something. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I had a weird handprint on the fridge one day. I walked in there and I took a picture of it because it, it was a very weird. It's like a four fingered handprint. And it's, I don't know, it's very unusual. But again, it's small. It's like this size, which is bigger yeah. than the footprint. Would have been a bigger child than the footprint, but still a, a child. Yeah. Still don't have children. Still, <laughs> you still don't. Yeah. And I sent it to my, my real estate agent, who's also my really good friend. And she has been helping, she helped me quite a bit um, with like paint, painting and decorating and stuff like that. And uh, she's like, I just made breakfast in there on Wednesday. That was not there. And this was like Saturday. And I was like, I know. Weird. Like they just appear. And I was like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't particularly like children altogether, ghost children. So do you, do you have this listed on air? Is this the one you said you have Airbnb now? Do you promote it as a haunted? Like, oh, I, okay. I was going to, I was going to ask that. I don't feel like it's fair to not tell people that it's haunted. No, but like promoting it at it's haunted, not like disclaimer haunted, like, hey, come stay at my haunted like boarding house. And if you can stay four days straight, I'll give you 25% off and like do it as a like, <laughs> I mean. Actually, they turned out to be the best roommates for me. They take care of the house and they scare off or they mess with people who are mean to me. Like, and I don't even have to be there if they if somebody makes me mad they will pay them back and i will i i have the that's awesome it is don't be using that to your advantage trying to hey go meet me at the house in jackson and uh... (laughs) no yeah because like so on on christmas here's an example so now yeah it is on airbnb i do list it as haunted it's called bethany's home sweet haunted home i have an instagram check it out all that stuff so you can see the videos of ghostly stuff happening and all the stuff that happens there um but and and so i've had several paranormal groups come through some shows and stuff like that but anyways so yeah i do the reason i started saying it was haunted was just because again i didn't think it was fair for people like me to show up like not expecting it and have this stuff happen or like people wonder if they're crazy um and then also people know that i'm not a slumlord because they mess with the electrics so like the light just won't work one day or the, the light bulb will unscrew by itself one day or the oven won't work one day. And I, in the beginning, I started, because it's an old house, I kept like calling in electricians and I, like the next day it's like, no, it's fine. So I stopped doing that. So I kind of felt like for those two reasons, so people know one, if the light's not working, it'll work tomorrow. Just ignore it and turn on a different light, you mm-hmm. know, but um, so that people understand that, that this is just part of it. Now, yeah. um, it is one of the most active places I can, I, you know, like my paranormal, the paranormal groups come through literally said like, this is one of the most active places we've ever been in, including like these famously haunted places like Waverly. Um, so <clears throat> it's been well enjoyed for, through that, you know, for the, those people who are really into that. But yeah, so on Christmas, um, I have smart locks, right? I program them usually about a week in advance or a couple weeks in advance to, to do the temporary uh, access codes. 
and um, I had a guest check in on Christmas Day. Now, this is my first year I've learned my lesson. I'm no longer allowing people to check in on holidays because yeah. when you message me on Thanksgiving going, how do I turn on the fireplace? I'm like, oh, the fireplace that's in the booklet that tells you exactly how that I have labeled on it where it says, pull down this flap, push this button. Oh, okay. Reading's you hard. To turn that on. Cool. Okay. On Thanksgiving. Sure. No problem. Um, Be so, right over. Yeah. <laughs> so on uh, Christmas, I had this guy show up two hours early, mm. two hours early. So I've programmed the locks for him. Actually, I even programmed it one hour early, but he showed up two hours early. And here I am up to my elbow in Turkey trying to get, you know, this all, you know, now I've got to change all these locks. So this guy annoyed me, obviously, because I'm like, who does this? Like you knew when you left home three hours ago, you were going to be early. Why didn't you text me then? Why did you wait until you got to the house to say like, oh, I'm here. Can you open the door? Like yeah. please, on Christmas day. So anyways, I was annoyed, but I just sure thing. Have a great day and reprogram the lock. Well, that night he has, his mother lived like a block away. So that night he stayed at his mom's or he, his family hung out at his mother's. And then um, the next, uh, their children were apparently sick or the, the tenant, I, I do have long-term tenants downstairs. And so they said that they were sick. They were like screaming all night long and coughing. So they decided to leave early, but when they went to leave, they couldn't find their car keys anywhere. And, um, and I, I offered, I said, do you want me to come help you look? No. So he hired a locksmith who had to come from Sacramento. So an hour away, he paid $650 because it's not just the law key, you know, now it's the yeah. cops. And so he, um, he, yeah, paid all this uh, to get new keys and left. Well, walked in and the spirits told me exactly where the keys were immediately because, uh, so I had the house completely decorated for Christmas. I'm extra, right? So the whole house had to tow Christmas, right? So I walk into one of the bedrooms, not one of the primary bedrooms. So kind of surprised at that, you know, I don't know. But, um, and there was this snowman uh, stuffy on the dresser and across, laying across its lap was like this kind of like a light up Elsa wand and the wand was turned on. So I went over to check it out and saw the keys behind the snowman. Interesting. So it's like, oh, so I was like, good news. I found your keys. You yeah. want me to mail them to you? <laughs> um, now he's got a spare. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, he does. Um, so yeah, so it's like, it's, it's sometimes it's kind of to my uh, benefit, but I feel like the spirits and I actually have a really good relationship. Um, but like recently, we flooded on New Year's Eve. We had in, in California, we had these massive storms for a month, basically. And on New Year's Eve, dumped rain. And so we ended up with four inches of water in the house. And because again, my foundation is the retaining right. wall for the creek. Okay. Yeah. So eventually the water just went higher than my foundation and came right into the, 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 the house. Um, and houses were wiped out like we've had FEMA and in, in around and I mean I didn't have it that bad so I um had to replace in the kitchen the subfloor and the flooring because the subfloor turned into squishy cardboard yeah. so um but when I remodeled the bathroom upstairs I just changed the flooring and the vanity like the spirits were like off the chart for like a month after that moving things like I have it on camera stuff moving in the middle of the night Right. Um, and stuff like that so I was like I don't really want to play with them <laughs> I have a handicapped dog so that's what you're hearing is him oh I gotcha everywhere but it's like he's so noisy when he moves like can you guys go away sorry about that that's I, right. I, I, I run a dog rescue too and I foster special needs dogs so I have well, most of mine are, are like weird diapers or you know cleft palates all these sorts of weird defects but anyways so I, I apologize. That's cool. You keep yourself busy I for do. sure. Um, well, we're going to have to put that property in the show notes because I want to check out that thing. But yes. we only have a few minutes left and I want to get into some of the um, the changes through COVID with tenants because I know that as I've been reading, that was one area that um, has had a lot of changes with, with what people can do and what landlords can do and rights and all that stuff. Has anything really affected your business? 
uh, negative or positive through all of that? Because I know that there could be some positive changes. I don't want to just harp on the negative. I feel like what I'm doing now is as a positive result of COVID and my in my concerns for you know everything. I mean, luckily, you know, the eviction moratorium is gone. Although I still to this day have never had to evict anybody. That's good. Um, so you know that's not been an issue necessarily, but that fear of not being able to, if I ever needed to, is kind of what led me to here. Which so again, I went from a couple single family like houses to now I've got, you know, what well, I, I still have several, but I bought uh, in twenty twenty one. I ended up buying th three houses, um, nice. and in one year, which was like everybody like in twenty twenty one was having a hard time buying one. But I yeah, I found these three houses, and apparently nobody wanted them because I ended up with them. And so I mean, I have an Afghani refugee family in one house, so I, I set it up to rent by the room, but ended up. Obviously, they needed furnished rentals, too, because they literally came to the country with nothing. Yeah. Um, and then, so, yes, yeah, so at the boarding house, and then I said, Jackson turned into a flip. I, like, I had to pivot again, just because I actually am not a huge fan of Airbnb, personally. Say what you will. I know lots of people make lots of money with it. But for me, I feel like, again, one of my prides in my boarding houses is that I provide affordable housing for people who need it. Airbnb takes away affordable housing from people who need it. So I have always had kind of a mm, feeling about like, I, you know, I appreciate your property. You do what you want. It's your business model. But for me, that's just not something I ever wanted to do. But, uh, you know, when you have a house that nobody actually wants to live in, <laughs> yeah. I felt like, oh, well, I guess I can Airbnb this, right? Because nobody actually wants to live here. And I really tried to find people who wanted to live there for some time and finally said, you know what, forget it. I'm just going to put it on the Airbnb. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's, you know, the COVID, most of it's gone. I think we have a couple of rules left. Like we have to provide, give like two months notice before, instead of, you know, one month's notice, but honestly, that's just being a decent human being anyways. It's yeah. hard to find housing. So people yeah. need to have more than one month. Now, of course, does that mean that people may not pay that that could be a problem, but you know, that's yeah. just something I have to consider when taking deposits and when, how I run my business, which again, if I was just renting single family homes, that would have been, that would have been a problem back in the day yeah. when I was losing $200 a month um, on a property, but now it's less of an issue. My goal has always just been that my properties pay for themselves and they yeah. do. And I don't make a lot of, I don't make money on top of it really, but that's because I'm constantly improving the properties. Cause yeah, again, yeah. my biggest concern is equity, not yeah. with how much money is in my pocket every single day. So yeah. I'm consistently, you know, like the Jackson house was built in the 18, uh, 1878. Um, and it just got, central heat and air for the first time like you know last year so wow. it's that's it's a good face like that. yeah so it's like now i've got all these projects that i'm like checking off that i want to do so solar yeah. um all these things that i want to do um which you know help me but also uh help the world help everybody you know yeah. so like solar yeah. replacing hvacs all this sort of stuff so i'm constantly improving all of my properties um yeah. So yeah, so the money, I never see it anyways, but it's yeah. it's for the future. Yeah, and that's super cool. I mean, that's proof to say that you just have to pick an investment model that you want to go to. Um, and appreciation and cash flow are always like the first two that you decide on. Which one is your goal? Which one are you relying on? And, uh, and it, it really depends, depends on, on your investment strategy. Yeah. Well, and where you are, right? Correct. Because yep. again, in California, our equity grows so quickly that yep. that can be a thing but like if i were in a place like you guys are then i have to look at cash flow because that equity just isn't growing the same way yeah i was buying houses in georgia or you know all these other places where the equity grows very slowly cash flow would be an issue yep. but for me because i live in california cash flow can't be the issue now i am lucky that i do have properties that make more money which right now are paying for the haunted one because yep. I mean it was empty basically for 10 months while I, one while I was doing all the stuff adding bathrooms and doing all the stuff that I was doing and setting it up but it is it is slower Airbnbs have dropped by like 80 percent for most people this year so but it's fine because the bills are still paid yeah and that's my concern yep 
Well, that's cool. I mean, you've built a really, really cool business and hopefully it, it keeps growing and you can keep expanding on that. Um, and I apologize. We got to cut off here because we got to get on to the, the next show I, of the I day. I just have two but... quick questions though. I have two quick questions. Yeah. You said that you have like, you caught some of the haunted stuff on camera. Do you have, is there a common space in that Airbnb unit where like you could just have a, a continuous live stream feed? Have you um, considered the, that? The only place that I have cameras in the Airbnb all the time is in my basement because okay. the basement does flood. So I do have, but I have, I threw in an extra one just because um, in there. And so, but that's, that's it. Um, so, but no, I don't, I don't, I know I, maybe I could, but I just, yeah, I wouldn't feel comfortable with it. I mean, I had this conversation recently about my other house, like putting a camera in the hallway because one of the tenants is having some issues. Um, but and, and, like, and the only reason I was asking is just, just for like promotion and try to, you know, use it to draw more people in. And I agree with the Airbnb philosophy. Like the only good thing about the Airbnb is that it, it, it pulls in, it does the marketing for you. Obviously, if someone's looking for, you know, a, a place in Sacramento, or you said it was Jackson, mm -hmm. you know, if they're looking for a place like that, and obviously you, you have that, I don't want to call it, it's not free marketing because you're paying a fee to them at the end of the day, but <laughs> you wouldn't have the, the access to all the people, right? I guess. So that's the, the trade-off, but you know, if you utilize them to, you know, get your property, some more awareness and get it rented or listed, it can be beneficial. Uh, my other question is when you buy those houses and have the intention for them to be boarding houses, do you have to have any type of rezoning or like, do you have to do anything with the city? You just start doing room by room and no worries. Oh? Yeah. There's, there's okay. still single family homes. Although actually in the state of California, everything has been redesignated as an R2. So I could turn it into a duplex if I wanted to, Okay. but no, they are just single family homes. Okay. Curious. That's, That's cool. cool. Good to yeah, know. I just, I just basically have to buy these houses, put locks on the doors and have a nice day. And now I found these locks that's just, I replaced the keypad because before I was drilling holes in the doors to put deadbolts in and that was a pain. But now I found these keypads that are just on the handle and yeah. Oh, so, cool. so that's really not, there's not a whole lot that I have to do as far as all of that different other than obviously I furnish furnishing them. Okay. Yeah. Very Which cool. is another one of your specialty. You can Which have I love. Your design Which I love. Yeah, it's my favorite thing. Who knew? Yeah. I'd actually I mean, you that. you found a passion that will also help you financially and man, just maximize that. So congratulations and keep going. That's that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. I'm keep I'm looking at other states. Like I really want to quit my job and just like work on houses because I enjoy it so much. But <laughs> that's my well, goal. it'll happen if that's a my goal, goal for this year. Happen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> be cool. That's exciting. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Hopefully the migraine is subsided and gone. Thank uh, so you. Keep going. Absolutely. But enjoy your weekend. And thank you so much for your time. That was awesome. It was great speaking with you guys. Thank you. You as well. Thank you.